All right, guys, in this video, this is just my first impressions on the DJI 4D. I really want to target all my fellow solo shooters because when this camera first came out, I was a little bit apprehensive. I was like, I don't know if that would be like very realistic for me and what I do. DJI did send this to me. They are allowing me to keep it. So that's cool and all, but you guys know I keep it honest. Uh, I'm all about my work and my passion projects and just I'm, I'm a selfish youtuber <laughs> someone sends me some gear and i don't like it i'm not going to talk about it or i'm going to be very blunt and honest about it uh and if i do like it it's gonna be the same energy so before i get into anything else let me show the little fashion film thing that i made two minutes long so watch through it and then we'll get back into it I want a guy to show me myself. I want him to love me so deeply, I'm not afraid to show him how ugly I can be. I want him to show me scars I never knew I had. But I don't want him to make them go away. I want him to hold my hand while I nurse them myself. And I want them to cherish the bruises they leave behind. What do you want? I want to ride or die. Oh, God. What does that even mean? I just want someone that's always going to love me. No matter what. Someone that's going to hold my hand and never let it go. She got to be special, though. She's going to be my legacy. What do you mean? Look, I ain't going to bend the world long as my lady remembers me fondly, that's all I need. All right, guys, if you don't want to watch this whole video, I'm going to sum it up for you. Uh, is this camera good for solo shooters? This isn't just a gimbal camera. This is a solo operators like hybrid dream kind of thing. Uh, you're getting internal NDs, you're getting a LIDAR, interchangeable lens mounts, follow focus, auto focus, like the list just goes on. And the important thing is that all of those things I just mentioned can all be controlled from this one monitor. It's a touchscreen hybrid monitor, which is fine outside. And most of those tools are all accessible from both of these grips on here too. So this whole video, again, is not going to be my, my in-depth review. That will be out in a few weeks. Again, this is just first impressions for solo operators mainly. Eric. <laughs> So let's go to the cars real quick. First proper shot, I am blown away. I just had a blast of ideas and future projects that I can use this system on. Literally, it's just Austin filming B, uh, BTS, me just manning the camera, and us just making up stuff on the spot, and it looks insane. I hate to say game-changing. I hate that, but, well. All right. I'm impressed. I'm insanely impressed with the quality that this thing is getting and just how easy it was. Like it allowed me to be creative and just open up all like these uh, cinematic ideas. Cause usually with handheld, you have to figure out how to get the handheld look and still get cinematic shots. And handheld's only cinematic if it lends to the story, if that, if that shot needs to be handheld looking. Otherwise, you want the viewer to be paying attention to what's going on in the scene. And the more stabilized your shot is, usually the more the camera disappears and more the viewer gets like, you know, drowned into what's happening. Scoozy. Scoozy. Slim's the only one that cares. Mia. 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 Well, the 4D wasn't on for most of those. Oh no. Mia. Jesus. I was hey, like, how come it's I mean, kind they, of, they look great. I was like, why is it kind of bouncing? That's why. So this camera's 10 pounds. 
which isn't, doesn't seem like a lot. It's usually what my rigs are. Different when I'm using handheld. I put it up against my stomach. I have all these points of contact. With this, you're having to kind of hold it out a little bit more up, down, just because you there's different movements you want to do with it. So it is a little bit backbreaking. I personally hate easy rigs with passion because they just, it really limits your movements. And if I'm using a gamble, I want to get sweeping motions and running and all this kind of stuff. And easy rig just isn't easy with that stuff. So I know Tilta has a waist strap with like an arm on it that balances. So I think that's going to be the go-to for this setup. DJI is something out their flex system and that could go on a backpack and there's straps that hold it. So I think that's going to be the go-to. Uh, let's compare it to a similar price kit. All right, so let's just start with the red Komodo. It's about $6,000, shoots raw. This shoots ProRes raw. Uh, the Komodo has red raw, I love red raw. And then you need a monitor to control it so you don't have to touch the Komodo. The small HD monitors, they have the, the smart control, whatever they call it, for red. I think that's like, that will start at like $1,500. So right there, you're already at what, $7,500. Now, obviously this is the Komodo kit, but this compared to the Komodo kit, what you're getting with this is you're also getting obviously the gimbal, you're getting internal NDs, you're getting the LiDAR, interchangeable mounts. I'll go into that here in a little bit. A whole follow focus system. You're also getting autofocus, autofocus tracking, no matter if you're using electronic lenses or manual lenses. Like the list goes on and on and on. Obviously, if you put like a C70 or a Sony camera on the gimbal, still you're still almost paying the same price when it comes to this it started to dawn on me that not only is this just like a, a gimbal camera this is actually like an amazing cinema camera but the reason i'm saying all this is literally all just from this top monitor you can control everything i could change my internal nds i could track to focus i could change the shutter i could change the aperture i could change all the gimbal settings like literally everything on this you can change from this one screen. That alone, there's no other camera system out there that does that, that has a gimbal built in. So as a solo operator, I was like kind of apprehensive because I was like, I don't know if I really need like a dedicated gimbal camera. But what I started to realize is this is just an amazing solo operating ecosystem. Just the way that it all just connects and works and it's all just flawless as a, as a camera with the whole menu systems and, and everything. Some of the downsides with it now, it's 10 pounds, which most of my rigs are around seven to 15 pounds, depending what camera it is. And I'm kind of used to lugging those around and usually I'm doing handheld. And then I have a backup camera that's gimbal. So I have an A cam and a B cam. So usually with me, I'm used to putting my cameras down, picking them back up throughout the gig. And my back's always hurting by the end of the night, usually. This thing was hurting my back a tiny bit more because if I'm doing handheld, I usually have the camera tucked up to me like this, which you could obviously do with this as well. When I'm shooting with the gimbal, I want to put in more movement and it makes me want to move even more. And what makes me want to create even more energy, but while keeping it smooth so people can pay attention to what's in the shot and not just like the camera work. Again, those first shots that we did, I was like, okay, this is, you could get really, I know the word cinematic, it's fucking overused so much, but you could truly get cinematic ideas from using this camera, uh, which I think is an important thing. I realized, cause like part of it's like, well, how come you just can't use like a, your camera with a regular gimbal? Switching lenses on this is insanely fast. When you use other gimbals and you have a big old camera rig set up on it, it's so annoying to have to rebalance it to the point to where you don't want to switch lenses. On this, it's a breeze. You switch it, the one adjustment on it, and you're done. Calibrate it, that's it. And then you're up and running. And being able to do that, like I did it mind switching, like we switched three lenses throughout today. And usually I wouldn't be, like, I would have been like, no, 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 unless I had a team to do it. Uh, but the blessing in disguise with that is, yes, it does limit you on uh, what lenses you can use, but halfway through the shoot, I was realizing it was so nice just having these light lenses. And when I need to change my lens out, easily just take it off, put a different lens on, literally takes less than 30 seconds to balance it. That's, that's one of the biggest things is how quick it, it, it is to balance. When you're using a regular gimbal system, it is you, you try your best not to have to switch a lens. You have to start de-rigging everything, get the lens on, re-rig it back up, and then you have to rebalance every part of the gimbal. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for this video. Again, this is just the first impressions. I'm blown away by this. I think the most important thing that I walked away uh, with this whole camera is all of the possibilities that it kind of just opened up to me. But moving forward, it, does, does this mean I'm going to get rid of all my other cameras? Probably not. This is a whole different beast of a tool. Um, I think I'm going to use this way, way, way more than I ever thought I would when I first saw this thing come out. So that is just like, yeah. 
Um, but anyways, subscribe in a few weeks, my full on review, I'll go very in depth about things. Not only does it work, it makes your, your it opens up more doors uh, for creativity. It's the DJI dance. <laughs> <laughs>